Welcome to Electro Online. Before we could explain what the second reason is why we use oil drops with microscopes, we need to explore the concept of what we call numerical aperture of a lens. Essentially, it's a dimensionless quantity that describes how much light can enter into the lens, and that depends on a few things. So, what do we call numerical aperture? We have an equation right here, Na is what we use for numerical aperture. Notice that it is equal to n, which is the index of refraction of the medium that the lens is in, times the sine of the angle theta. Now the sine of the angle theta comes from here. Here's the diagram. Notice we have an objective lens, we have a focal point of the lens, and typically the object is placed right outside the focal point. Notice we have the diameter of the lens, and we have half the diameter of the lens. And notice that the angle theta makes a relationship between the focal length, which is the horizontal distance from here to here, essentially from the focal point or where the object is placed to the lens, and then the height here is half the diameter of the lens. Now for small angles, and these are going to be small angles, notice that the sine of theta is approximately equal to the tangent of theta, which is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the opposite side would be d over 2, adjacent side would be f, and so essentially it's d, the diameter of the lens, divided by twice the focal length of the lens. That is going to be equal to the sine of theta. That is then multiplied times the index of refraction of the medium, which gives us the Na, the numerical aperture. So you might already begin to think, wait a minute, air has an index of refraction of 1. Immersion oil has an index of refraction of 1.52, which means that placing an oil drop there will increase the amount of light going into the lens, just because this here, n, is a bigger number than air being equal to 1. So there you have already an inroad as to the other reason. Now, there's another reason besides that, and we'll get into that in the next video, but you see the relationship there. Now, if we're going to rewrite this equation like this, Notice it's going to be the index of refraction times the diameter of the lens divided by twice the focal length of the lens. Hmm. So, if we think about that, notice that the numerical aperture, again, it's all about letting light into the lens and into the optical system. In this case, the optical system we're dealing with is the microscope. You want to let as much light into the microscope as possible. It's always the key. Microscopes, telescopes, doesn't matter. It's all about letting as much light in as possible. So we can see that the numerical aperture increases as the index of refraction of the medium from where the light comes increases. So that's why we use immersion oil as one. Also notice that the numerical aperture increases as the diameter of the lens increases. We want the objective lens to be as big as possible to let in more light. Notice that the numerical aperture decreases as the focal length increases. But actually that's not as important if you think about it. I'm going to put some parentheses around that because essentially notice that the numerical aperture increases as the power of the lens increases. Now the power by definition is 1 over the focal length. So when you have a higher power lens, you increase the numerical aperture as well. So you want a high power lens, you want a large diameter lens, and you want an index of refraction greater than that for air in order to let in as much light as possible. And so that's the concept of the numerical aperture, which will help us understand a little bit more why we use telescopes, or not telescopes, but microscopes, the way we do. And that is how it's done. Okay? <coughs> I thought I heard a cough there.